Welcome to my little review of the brand new VO4 4K Ultra HD front and full HD rear A129 Pro Duo dash camera. VO4 were kind enough to send me this free of charge but it will be a completely impartial review. If I don't like the camera I will say it, I'm not influenced in any way. If they want the camera back I will send it them. As you can see the outer packaging is superbly packaged extremely sturdy quite hard to actually get into when you start getting into it so you've got an outer sleeve and then you open the main box visually to look at this is pretty much identical to the VO4 A129 Duo which I reviewed probably a year ago which is a superb camera uh, so I'm expecting slightly more of the same but better from this camera as you can see already attached to the camera is the GPS unit You've got the rear camera connection, AV output if you want to run it to a little LCD screen. I'll just detach the GPS unit so you can see. For anyone who doesn't know, the GPS unit sticks to the windscreen, so the camera is easily removable just by sliding it across like so. And this is the lens that rotates up and down. It does not go side to side like one previous model did. It was pretty much a useless gimmick. But yeah, you've got a really good range of uh, vertical movement there on that lens so it makes no difference whether you're putting it on a HGV windscreen which is almost vertical or whether you're putting it on a slope sports car windscreen depending on the angle of the windscreen it'll uh, it'll be fine and try not to forget to remove the protective film over the lens so that's the basics on the front camera now to the rear camera size wise it's possibly equivalent to a old style box of matches Again here you've got the full range of movement on the lens but don't forget the image front and rear can be flipped 180 degrees in the menu system on the front camera. As you can see the rear camera is easily detachable from the mount. When you get inside the middle of the box this is the first thing you see, hello, um, it gives you some warranty information and if you actually register with VO4 online, uh, your 12 month warranty in the top right hand corner there is extended to 18 months, but I wouldn't really worry. As long as you've no initial issues with the camera when you first open it and test it, I don't think you'll have an issue. And here's the Pro User Manual, which is very detailed. You could spend 15-20 minutes going through all the features, but I don't really want to do that. I want to just get through a quick box opening and then get to some footage. Because essentially all I require in a dash camera is great video, great audio, reliability and a decent price. So let's see if this delivers. So here's the other bits and pieces underneath the box. You've got some spur sets of adhesive 3M pads for the front and rear. I think there's at least two each. And here's some cable tidy clips if you don't want to hide it within the bodywork of the interior. A micro SD to USB adapter which comes in handy, that's new for this model. So essentially you can just remove your SD card from the camera, place it into this adapter there and then just plug it into any USB device, a television, a computer and you can view all your footage. This is the 6 meter cable that connects the front camera to the rear camera and as you can see everything is labelled up clearly. Um, it doesn't really matter if you get them the wrong way around, it's just it makes it slightly easier to have the 90 degree bend uh, come in from the main front camera and use the straight one to the rear camera and this is a media cable to connect it to your computer if you wish. And this is just a plastic tool to help guide the uh, cables around the interior plastics to help hide them. This pack contains the 12 volt outlet to USB socket adapter and the front power cable. As you can see the smaller connection goes into the camera and the other end is just a standard USB. If you've got a USB on your vehicle already output you could just use that to power the camera as long as it's over one amp. Otherwise they do supply you with the 12 volt outlet cigarette adapter and you get two connections so it comes in handy if you want to charge your phone or use a sat nav as well if you need it. Essentially that's everything that comes in the box when you order it.
Right, I don't think anybody's ever done a demonstration straight out the box. You get this little note inside, it tells you the GPS mount, which is this, is already attached to the back of the front camera, which is that this is the front camera. And it says, please remove all protective film from both cameras, i.e. it means the lens. So it just avoids it getting scratched in transit. And don't forget to do the rear camera as well. I'm going to be using a small 32 gig card. This would not be big enough for the camera. You'd need, a, I would say, at least a 128 or a 256 if you're going to be using it uh, over extended periods. But like I say, it's just to review. So I've got a, a little power bank fully charged. So this is what will happen when you plug it in from scratch. I've not done anything to the camera whatsoever. There we go. Please insert your card. That beeping is a warning, it's not recording. So if anything goes wrong with your card or the camera, it tells you it is not recording by beeping. Which is a nice little feature. So if we turn the camera off. Pop a card in. Turn it back on. It may need formatting. I think it's a brand new card, but we'll see if it likes it. It does. There we go. Format. Okay, so I'll turn the camera off now. Let's turn the bug back on. There we go. If I change the view, ah, the image is upside down. You can rotate that. So this is the front camera. If I press it again, this is the rear camera. No, it's basically up and running, but I will be updating the firmware before we get going for a proper test run. This is static footage from a car park, just to give you an idea on the image resolution, what you can, the details you can pick up. My word, she's got a lot of grandkids. <laughs> As you can see, it's, uh, it's a really good picture. There's no UV filter on this. Uh, it's completely standard out the box. All I've done is updated the firmware to the current firmware version. And this is an example of the rear 1080p footage. This is very, very good as well. Now bear in mind my rear window is heavily tinted uh, limousine black and the image is still incredibly clear. Just a quick little clip to show um, what it's like, you know, for audio and pulling away. And I'm just making an, a, a comment about the Mercedes parked on the end. Is that your, is that your mug? Is that your, is that your mug? It certainly is, my friend. This clip is a great example of how the camera deals with low direct sunlight facing the camera which a lot of dash cameras can really struggle with. Uh, some of the low end cameras just have a black spot in the sky but as you can see in a second this one handles it very very well. 
also like I said before there's no CPL lens fitted on this that would more than likely greatly help the image but even so um, unless the sun's directly shining into the camera everything else around the peripheral is very clear regarding the lorry in front he's obviously lost or leaking for somewhere but he's causing absolute chaos for everybody around him he just should pull over either ring through to get better directions or pull over and check his uh, map what are you doing man what are you doing when you get to nighttime driving the footage is good but it's not as good as I personally would have hoped um, this is a short clip of two scooter riders wheeling out of Sainsbury's and then they decide to have a race with a Lexus and I'm surprised at who won popping a wheelie coming out of Sainsbury's just for information this is a 30 mile an hour speed limit He's trying to race that Lexus. Whoa, Jesus! He's the both doing it. Lexus lost. Dude, you got beat by two scooters. Here's exactly the same clip from the rear camera. Uh, just to give you an example of how clear it is, it's pretty. It's pretty good. Um, but just bear in mind I have got limousine black tint in the rear of my car and don't forget the front camera is 4k the rear camera even though it says it's only 1080p um, it's still really really good baby boy ends of arms and goes rest foreign lorry always stay in the left hand lane and just pull out So here we have a really good example of how the camera performs at night with street lights going into a no street light zone and it's just the car headlights. So all in all, I think the camera is very, very good. And if you've not got one, you could buy much worse. But just bear in mind that you would have to buy the appropriate micro SD card to go with the camera. Being a 4K front camera, 1080p rear, the file sizes when they save are quite large. The front camera, the 4K, is signified with the F, obviously, for front, and the bottom one is the 1080R for rear. These are both three minute clips that have been saved. It's the same clip. And the front is roughly three times the size than the rear. So a front and rear three minute clip will save approximately 1.2 gigabytes of data. So that will pretty quickly fill up um, even a 64 gig memory card. So that was my take on the A129 Pro Duo dash camera from VO4. Absolutely superb daytime footage. Uh, could be better at night, but with firmware updates, I'm almost certain VO4 will address that in the near future. 
All the VO4 products use internal capacitors to shut the camera down safely, which makes them ultra, ultra reliable. So if you're in the market for a really reliable, high quality front and rear dash camera setup, then I don't see why you couldn't seriously look at purchasing one of these.